Hi guys, Joel from Jonesy's Auto Club, and in this video, I'm going to show you the proper method for checking your piston ring end gap. Okay, I guess I'm going to show you how to uh, how to check and verify your ring gap. So um, I'm going to take the uh, top compression ring, set it down into our bore, slide it around like that, and I'm going to actually use the piston itself to square up that ring so that we can get an accurate measurement. So I'm going to slide it down in there like so, and that make sure that that piston is, or that ring is completely squared up in there. <clears throat> now, um, as per the uh, Hastings, which is the manufacturer of uh, the rings that I'm using, as per their uh, specifications um, for this approximate bore size, we need to have kind of a go, no-go gauge of minimum of 14 thousandths maximum of 26,000. So I've got those two feeler gauges ready to go. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that the 14 thousandths feeler gauge fits in our gap, which it does, and make sure that the 26 thousandths does not fit in the gap, which it doesn't. So that means that our ring gap is correct as per the Hastings manufacturer. Now, a little trick in how to measure whether or not you have too much taper in the bore itself is to actually physically measure the ring gap of what you have at various spots inside the cylinder bore. So if you measured at the bottom where in theory there is the least amount of wear and you compare the difference between the ring gap on the bottom to the ring gap on the top where there's the most amount of wear, then you can determine how much taper you have. Now Hastings says that you should never have any more than three thousandths of an inch of taper for one inch of bore. Okay? Never ever to exceed more than twelve thousandths of an inch. So if you have a four inch bore, three thousandths, that's twelve thousandths of taper. Um, at that point you would definitely have no choice but to uh, bore the cylinder and run an oversized piston. So we can